conventional approach to conventional challenges. A very unique topic for discussion in the times that we are right now in. We are a few days removed from the 50th Earth Day celebration. And during this past month, many of us had some stark realizations about us humans and our role and the effects we have on the planet we are blessed to live on. With all this in the backdrop, I would like to open this very important conversation to Frank Richter, founder and chairman of Horasis. Frank, good afternoon. Thank you for joining from Switzerland. As an international thought leader on economics and poverty po uh, monetary po uh, policy, what are some of the macro and the microeconomic effects of COVID-19 on the world stage? Mm -hmm. And more importantly, what are the possibilities of us to return to a new normal? Thanks so much, Priya, for inviting me and uh, all of us for this very important conference. Let me start to say that I'm very mm -hmm. sad to see you know, the dramatic developments in this world with 200,000 people so far having lost uh, their life. And uh, my condolences are with um, all those families who um, lost the beloved. Mm -hmm. um, I think the corona crisis will go on um, until we really found a vaccine. And this might take another year or so. Uh, talking about the economy, we won't really go back to normal anytime soon. And we might even enter um, something similar to a great recession. Great Recession, uh, we experienced um, uh, more than uh, 100 years ago, uh, you know, starting in the US um, and um, moving um, all the planet, all countries into a very deep economic crisis. Uh, there's actually some hope that um, uh, everything will be back very soon. Some economists talk about a V-shape uh, recovery, something about uh, a U-shape. I think it's more like an L-shape. So we are down and we won't really go up for a, a very long time. Uh, we see that supply chains are disrupted all around the world and uh, it's almost impossible to produce a very complex product anymore, like for example, a car um, or a, a machine, because we in this globalized world um, uh, get supplies from China, from Latin America, from the US, and uh, all these supply chains are um, uh, disrupted. Um, thinking ahead, um, I believe um, the uh, corona crisis um, is showing us uh, the very uh, best of human mankind and the very worst of human mankind. Why do I say this? Um, let me start with uh, the worst of human mankind. We see that a lot of uh, people are starting to point fingers and we see a bit of uh, the Machiavellian mindset. Um, when we say, you know, the, the virus comes from overseas, some people talk about um, a China virus or an Italian virus, and um, you know we immediately close borders and we also close our mental borders, and uh, there's a lot of finger pointing, and uh, that's what I mean by the Machiavellian mindset, uh, which is now um, uh, governing the world, and um, basically the the end justify uh, justifies the means, but it's also maybe the very best of human mankind coming up uh, to the fore because we see a lot of solidarity. Uh, people help each other, people point hands. And um, we might actually in this uh, times of crisis just sit back and think uh, what we can change. For example, the economic system, which is very much dominated by short-term decision-making. Um, think about the so-called Anglo-Saxon model, where we usually uh, have a transaction at short time, a short term to, for example, push the uh, the stock price. Um, laying uh, off um, people might uh, lead to a higher stock price. And this is uh, the economic systems which reign so far, um, the Anglo-Saxon system, and maybe with COVID, and as we are sitting back and can reflect, we might um, uh, come up with uh, a new economic system, which is more long-term oriented, more based on principles. And um, so uh, COVID might be something even like a blessing in disguise for the economy on the very long term, because we are redefining the principles of um, the economy. Um, what is also happening right now is that uh, COVID is accelerating 
the digitalization of our companies, of our organizations. Digitalization already took place for um, the last few years, but now with COVID, um, it's um, much, much faster. We are uh, almost forced to digitalize and uh, to speed up uh, the adaption, ad adaption of uh, digital systems in our economic structures. Um, and this um, might have um, quite um, severe consequences for the future of work, because a lot of people might lose uh, their jobs. Unemployment is already on the rise right now. And with digitalization, it will be much, much faster. And um, uh, lifetime employment uh, is already done. And um, uh, fixed employments um, might be more the exception than the rule. And we might all work um, uh, from our home in the future being freelancers, but we are not employed by large uh, companies anymore. So the, the future of work is very bleak. On the one hand, digitalization is giving us a lot of opportunities, but um, also there are a lot of challenges. And um, unemployment will uh, eventually also lead to social unrest. People will go to the streets because they lose their jobs. Similar to what we have seen during the Great uh, Recession of 29. And uh, we've already seen last year um, uh, major um, uh, unrest in the streets of Paris, for example, the Yellow West movements, right before COVID. And um, uh, we see that uh, the middle class is shrinking because not everybody is, uh, is in part of globalization. So there's basically a divide between the haves and the haves not. And uh, in industrialized countries like Europe, uh, in America, but also merchant countries like India, China, and Africa. And um, yeah, that is um, uh, some concern that uh, on the very long term, we will see social unrest because people will go to the streets. And um, uh, so with the future of work, people losing job unemployment on the rise. So it's a very uh, dramatic uh, picture. I would like to give some hope as well. And uh, you put it nicely uh, in the announcement of the conference, saying we need hope and we need um, to, to think positive. And um, I think, you know, we as humans, we all got the, um, the forces, uh, the power uh, to look ahead and to find solutions. Um, and um, I think we, we should uh, continue. We have to be creative and we have to, we have to work together. And uh, I think what we need more is really dialogue, uh, something we are doing today as we are bringing together people from all around the world, thinking about um, the future of work, um, the post-COVID economy, um, solidarity, and uh, how we can all make this um, uh, planet a better uh, place to, to live on. And that's uh, a bit the, um, uh, my vision for hope I would like to, to give to everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Frank. So I'm going to now move to one of the world's largest democracies, India. So India is one of the world's largest democracies and a growing economy with population close to 1.3 billion. India has survived many pandemics in the past. Gopalji, so my next question to is, is for you. Being a research scholar and a social worker in a country like India, which is hailed to be one of the oldest civilizations on the earth. How do you think the old Indian lifestyle has, has helped or hurt the situation in Indian, India during this pandemic? Namaste, everyone. I'm happy to be present among this August audience. Uh, thank you, Frank, for enlightening us on the economic issues of the COVID world. He has talked about how to recover the economy and uh, how we will proceed with the economy, how the sh what will be the shape of the economy. Uh, my perspective is uh, the bigger challenge that today we have over 1 million COVID, positive COVID patients in US. And over or uh, more than that in Europe. And the fact is, as uh, Frank has said, there's a two, uh, around 200,000 uh, people have died. Our first and foremost uh, priority is should be what uh, I said is to survive. This mankind should survive. Pandemic like uh, Corona, COVID, and many more to come. This one is not. No one can uh, say that. Assure us the last one. 
so there are many other pandemics going to come going to happen the first and foremost priority is to protect mankind from such epidemic as uh, frank rightly said that uh, we may take around uh, it may take one one year or so to uh, invent or to arrive with the, some um, vaccination or something like that so shall we uh, focus upon surviving rather than economy economy can wait luxury can wait we can focus upon surviving look at the figures in the western part and the eastern part for that example i would give an example of india we have over 10 uh, 10000 i think 10000 cases uh, right now positive cases and we have a mortality rate of uh, total number of mortalities over 800 so if you look at the ratio belgium has 400 plus per million deaths and india has 0.4% per million shall uh, we focus upon the how it has happening some people are telling that india has lesser facilities they don't have infrastructure to test they are the number of testing is lesser so i had a conversation with my friend a doctor friend in london so he said that in london only those people are tested who are really a need to be admitted in the hospital with ventilators even one pas- one patient he say that i am affected or he seems to be he is showing the symptoms he has been put in home that you stay uh, inside we will admit you only if the condition is worst and they okay. test only to decide whether it should go to the normal ward or a corona ward and he said that he himself was a corona patient and his family was not tested while in india we are testing in communities we are going random testing if someone found a locality then whole community is tested whole locality is tested his family is quarantined his family is tested so the uh, claim that india has lesser facilities or they are testing less is totally farce going for such things i think what we should focus is how india is surviving these pandemics as uh, i said that uh, we have survived many pandemics many attacks so it is our food system our eating habits we have a decided pattern of what to eat when to eat how to eat how much to eat everything every foods for the seasons food for the occasions the pattern is fixed in ayurveda the things which are projected to be or uh, ingredient to boost the immunity are a regular ingredient of our daily food three time a meal we are getting those ingredients like turmeric like uh, all other things which are now being used they are very popular in west also like the turmeric milk the golden milk is now very famous in U- uh, us so there we can adopt those things which were and which are being practiced in india we cook three times a day live food that is the key for the health we are not eating here that uh, for a week cooking and uh, keeping preserving it for a week we cook it every day three times a day live cooking and taking the meals so those habits and even what to eat and how to eat that is very important to boost the immunity see you might say that i am not telling that india uh, don't have india have only this much of positive uh, corona patient there might be number of people but they are surviving the mortality rate the fatality rate is very low and people even without testing without medicating they are surviving otherwise there could have been million of people died uh, from this corona pandemic so it is the time for the west to look upon and uh, appreciate the indian ancient indian uh, food system the traditional medicine system even china is doing that chinese medicine is the ancient uh, medicine system only so whole india is whole india knows these recipes these these things are household knowledge they are no secret no uh, not told in any medical college in everyday practice we are doing that my mother my grandmother my 
all the people of my family, even my daughter, she's young, she knows these things are going to increase my immunity. So first thing, rather than going for uh, investing billions in R&D, can we improve our lifestyle? Can we reduce our needs? Can we go for those medicinal things in daily habits of foods? Those really can help us. And they, we can fight against these pandemics. So this is my submission from India. And India is ready to share its Indian ancient knowledge. It is no more secret. We don't have any patent. We, don't, we did not patent it. It is for the humankind. Anyone can uh, take it from anywhere. We are ready. India is ready to serve the uh, West. And uh, see today what is happening. The second, uh, one, most, one more thing I want to add here. The family system, which is which is being missed in West. See, you don't have any support in where while you are down, while you are alone. The deaths in the West and the European countries are largely attributed to uh, out of fear also that I am. Uh, they succumb to the uh, fear. Many deaths are due to that also. It is a uh, uh, case to be uh, investigated or it is to be uh, find, found out what is happening in that case. So the family system should be uh, given the thrust upon and the food system we should change. Economic and weight, we should focus upon increasing the immunity through our food habits and uh, living system. See, in our uh, country, from the ancient time, there is called a Brahma Muhurata. Rising before sunset, two hours before sunset, that means that time, the atmosphere is pure, oxygen level is very high. So we have maximum things and we have that um, uh, yoga, which is largely accepted by the West. And uh, they are getting benefit of uh, uh, this thing. Now it is a time to accept Ayurveda also as a medicine. We should practice in Europe, America and get benefited out of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, this is very interesting because, uh, you know, having uh, the science of uh, Ayurveda in our in our old ancient system and uh, your immunity. There was an echo. Um, is uh, extremely uh, important and um, you know I am a living example of it but that story is for another day. So I'll move, now move to our next speaker. Arushi, you're an environmentalist, entrepreneur, and an acclaimed Kathak dancer. You're also a co-founder and chairperson of Sparsh Ganga campaign, which you started in 2009 to attempt uh, uh, to clean up and save River Ganga. So as we, as humans, attempt to return to a new normal uh, life, what lasting impact has the virus had on the environment? Okay. And more importantly, what changes need to be made by most of the dominant inhabitants of the planet? That's us. Hello to everybody. Uh, to few is a good morning and few to good evening. Um, I will start uh, uh, what, how you started, Priya, uh, with the conversation. We are talking about the Earth Day. And I believe oh, Earth Day, we celebrated when Earth, Mother Earth was very happy and the most cleanly found. So uh, what is happening nowadays? Uh, I keep seeing things because we are the people going to different rivers. We are cleaning rivers. Uh, we are cleaning the colonies. We are planting the trees. So we were the people, the whole Sparsha Ganga team has always been involved into finding the facts that how from a beautiful scenery, uh, we all have been painted in our childhood. I am sure if I'll start talking about, we all will agree about that. Doesn't matter which country we belong, doesn't matter which religion we belong. But whenever our teacher used to ask us to draw a painting, we used to paint Photo a mountain filled with the snow. We used to uh, draw, uh, we still drawing those green trees. We, we join the blue rivers. But unfortunately, um, over a period of time, we started to lose those uh, blue river because there's 1.9 billion liter garbage has dumped into Ganga every single day. There's 16 billion people has cut down from uh, the whole world each year. 
and that is how this beautiful portrait in your and my heart started to distort it but i will start with a very interesting narrator which uh, the mother nature is uh, trying to transmit it to us that is if somebody has done a illegal position on your property how you deal with that the first thing we do we talk to people nicely we tell them this is our concern this is my property kindly leave it but when we are more stubborn and we don't want to listen it then we have to take the other measures and that is what happened in this era because we can see the mother nature has taken those measures i am so glad to tell you that this earth day even in india 19 cities are overcome from the air pollution we talk about the air quality which has improved from 2.5 to 30% we are talking about ganga ji it has more oxygen which improved almost 60% than the other rivers so everything started to change even though we all sitting at our places and even the mumbai mother is a good friend i am sure from your office which is in a very busy location you can still hear all those bird chirping and fortunately all the street in delhi uh, the shores in italy all the dolphins are started to coming back that is a mother nature way to telling us that we were really really going wrong and this is a right time this is a right thing we can do so it started to making the balance but the challenge starts now because once the lockdown is over we again coming out we are using mask i'll, I'll it's really want to talk about it because this is more relevant what we are discussing today so we are using mask and what we do once it's finish with the lifetime we are throwing it on the streets same mask been consumed by a lot of animal which is spreading a lot of diseases so what we have really need to think on this time how everything can be sustainable my uh, uh, friend fran talked a lot good thing about the economy how can we survive with that and every time we uh, with the united nation panels with a lot of countries we have only one concern that is the most sustainability and fortunately i see this time in a good way i see this time that the mother nature is reviving uh, its real color its real pace we all doing the same way and uh, uh, especially i would say uh, that my team has started doing a work and i would really like to share with all of you because we are talking about the sustainability how we are going to use the sustainability model in this kind of time when everybody is so bothered people are dying economy are crashing and all the environment is growing beautiful so in india we use one of the cloth called khadi khadi is not only a cloth for us this is an ideology so what happen when you make a normal fabric that that takes 55 ml of water where the same time khadi takes only 3 liter so what we are trying to focus right now if we have to use a mask what we have to do we are making a khadi mask so you can wash it you can reuse it so that is how the uh, the the rural areas women are also getting employment we are moving towards a sustainable economy we are moving towards a sustainable environment so i guess yes uh, i see this time in a positive way for the mother nature priya yeah. fantastic arushi so covid 19 has disrupted many industries including the in entertainment industry which has been hit very badly i would like to ask the next question to one of the most talented filmmakers bollywood has among many mr madhur bhandarkar when the lockdown ends what do you expect to be the new norms of filmmaking and do you see a way bollywood returning to the bollywood of the 20 teens hello can you hear me yes we can uh 
see the thing is what uh, bollywood or indian film industry i would call is been one of the biggest largest film makers and producing uh, people in the world and today suddenly it's not only bollywood i would say the film industry entire global film industry has been shut in the lockdown okay in my life i would never thought about ke there would be a time where all shooting would be shut there would be a time where all theaters operas are completely nowhere and there's no show people are not coming everywhere the lockdown is there and we see amount of numbers uh, we are seeing everywhere the kind of uh, deaths which taking place entertainment industry is always in the forefront always is such a thing ke is one of the escapist thing we we see always today also when the whole entire world is in a lockdown you know you people are watching netflix or amazon and people watching movie so there also the entertainment industry is entertaining them and there are people who are watching those movies or series or whatever it is i mean to say but is it definitely it will be pre corona and post corona days which will be then which is affected big time actually the workers the workers who are working over here uh, across the world i'm talking but i don't want to say what again on india across the world the daily wages people who are working over there and every day they is to get their money and every day the shooting is to go on and suddenly there is no food for them there is no ration for them there is no money for them for their paying for their credit cards and everything so there is absolutely a big blow for them Indian film industry over here, we lot of uh, uh, organization are there. Often fraternity is there. Lot actors are there who has contributed, which we have seen in abroad also, who has contributed <coughs> to the well-being of these work people over here. Which we are giving them ration, we are giving them the whatever that they want, money for the daily thing. It is very essential. Now. The thing is what when the film industry will start once again. Whenever, whenever the lockdown gets over, now it can be after one month, two months, three months, four months. I don't know because I am speaking a lot to the people across global. I am speaking a lot of people in. I spoke to people in Berlin. I spoke to people in New York, LA, uh, Dubai, everywhere and in India. So they say that we. I spoke to the theater owners also. They say we don't see. the theater opening till the time till september october because they feel ke social distancing you have to maintain it how you can allow people to get into a theater of 300 400 people together sitting in a theater watching film together going over there so that is another thing another thing shooting also is the same thing when our film industry is shooting we shoot with actors hello yeah can you hear me yeah We 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 shoot with actors which which have crowd over there. Any given point of time, we have at least 150, 200 people normal for a film shooting or a series shooting or a web series we are shooting. But if you are shooting in a crowd, there would be action scene. There would be a scene where dancing scene are there, where dancers are there. So how we are going to maintain the social distancing? It is very very essential to see about it. I I have come to know with a lot of people in abroad. They say that we don't want to shoot till the summer of 2021. that means state next year before that there won't be so there will be tremendous amount of losses especially the films which are in the mid which are being made and there would be tremendous amount of changes which has to be done in 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 terms of the budget in terms of the uh, scripting everything because if you can't if you if somebody says you cannot have people together crowded you there's a party sequence there is a sequence where you have people in in, in a event fung where how you can do all these things so it's very difficult to uh, go through the whole procedure about it and i think the entertainment industry would be the last thing which will be opening throughout the world i'm talking about throughout the world not only in india but throughout the world because our our film our work nature is every time people are together we are working together there's a sequence there's a event everywhere promotion everything is there it's, it cannot happen sitting at home you cannot shoot a film sitting at home i mean to say so it's very difficult i mean there would be some people who would make movies sitting you know, but there would be very niche you cannot have a, a perspective a storytelling through the world by uh, you have to shoot and, and, and go physically over there and you have to shoot a story because film industry basically they are entertainers and they are storytellers but i'm sure about it we, we industry has survived uh, the, the global i mean to say the 
second world war and we came again uh, with a big uh, entertainment industry came in the very big way we have survived there lots of uh, <laughs> terror thing happened bomb blast and everything we did came pandemic people have seen and we have come i'm, I'm sure about it ki whenever entertainment industry start it may be after six months or after after one year or somewhere the entertainment industry will be there and it will entertain the world globally thank you So, Mr. Brahmanand Singh, we have another acclaimed uh, National Award filmmaker with us here. Um, you are uh, well known for making independent cinema. As Madhur ji said, the challenges of the filmmaking might be similar. However, what are your thoughts in terms of funding between the commercial cinema and the independent cinema? Is this the time that creates new stories to tell the world? or could that be a silver lining through all of this can you shed some light so i think like madhur has portrayed the scenario for all our for all of us i think very very well for that uh, in the larger perspectives uh, frank and others did i feel that um, let me address the points that uh, maybe has not been addressed so far and one of the things that i would like to point out is that uh, number 1 uh, let me share that uh, the very topic that you have uh, yeah, you know conventional approach i think we are living in unconventional uh, it needs unconventional unconventional approach because the challenges are unconventional so i think uh, a lot of things are changing will change there is no doubt about that uh, however every 30 years 40 years 50 years there is a palpable change there is a defining change in the way everything is happening uh, i think 20 years i would say so here what will happen is that since we are in the business of entertainment we are in the business of storytelling uh, a lot of responsibility gets shifted on us for the popular mindset as well because we create stories of hope i think the kind of despondency the kind of uh, um, the kind of pessimism the kind of hopelessness that uh, many of us are going through there needs to be a lot of stories of hope and things like that so i think uh, at the same time consumption is not going down like madhur said everyone is uh, the, the, the digital consumption has gone up even more i mean uh, many times more yes huge so uh, maybe the manner of watching the films will change from theater to home theaters and large screen and large television sets and uh, all those things 18 inch sets and things like that uh, maybe the release patterns will change it will happen on amazon and netflix as maybe every uh, friday there would be 10 movies that will be coming on netflix or amazon or or uh, all these platforms but i think that uh, the second part that i wanted to address is that by nature uh, you know filmmakers especially independent filmmakers but all filmmakers are not just artists but they are also entrepreneurs okay so they have to devise ways constantly to find ways to make films i'm sure madhur has gone through that a lot of us have gone through that where it's It's, it's it's there's no one particular way to make a film so i think when you ask me for funding i think there will be a lot of unconventional ways to generate funding i mean till some time back nobody had even uh, thought of uh, uh, something called crowdfunding okay but it came up i mean uh, at the same time there used to be something very palpable there are uh, there used to be state funding and it's still in many uh big and progressive culturally progressive countries there is a lot of state funding so i think uh, a lot of those will probably happen but funding patterns will change at the same time at the same time there will be an an even greater need tell stories and tell stories of hope tell stories of positivity and uh, in a way and in a way Me. that uh, it 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 engulfs all of us and connects all of us so i think a the patterns are definitely changing the 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 approaches have to be unconventional rather than conventional and i think uh, this is something that we have to be very very assured of that we don't have to panic because 
there have been calamities before there have been interruptions before there is nothing like this that one can think of long long time back not even spanish flu and nothing that we can compare it with but uh, there will be a change there will be a change things will get back to normal uh, in a cricket parlance i would say this is a rain interrupted match maybe the match will get washed out maybe the year will get washed out but there will be another match you know there will be the second test match or the third test match so hold on i think that uh, summing it up patterns are very patterns are emerging and they are very very different the way we consume entertainment the way consume life consume job i think will be very different entrepreneurial elements will survive hope will survive optimism will survive and i think these are the things that will define from the people who will uh, enter the mainstream back again when things happen and people who who get uh, sidelined and who just fade out so i think it's a very um, one of those phases where a lot of things are being churned out and uh, let's see what comes out but yes hope needs to be there i think and we need to do a lot of things with understanding that uh, there will be ways and there will be ways to do things so uh, once cinema is made distribution is the one that takes the baton and runs the test of the race in promoting and attempting to make the film a hit next panelist is uh, mr vikash chopra who is the business head of one of the largest distribution houses of india pen studios uh, mr chopra can you hear me um he's on mute uh, can you please unmute him? mr chopra can you hear me okay i can hear you priya so uh, i'm sure this keeps you up at night uh, during these times but can you please share your thoughts on how the movie theaters and the audiences are going to experience when the when things come back to normal post the lockdown what is the scenario going to look like what hi priya the madam the whole thank for inviting me to be part of this panel and a big hello and namaste to all my co panelists Uh, Priya, I am an optimistic. I am optimistic because of three major reasons. Uh, usually, being social animals, we we need to socialize. We need that in our DNA. That's how we have evolved over centuries, over million million of millions of years. That's what keeps us apart from the other life on this planet. it's very important that we go out socialize and socialize doesn't mean staying at home socializing means going out socializing with friends socializing with the community socializing as a country so that's one key uh, dna of a human being which we need to keep in mind number two i feel that human spirit has great great ingenuity and resilience we have over centuries there have been so many instances that we have fought back and we have adapted ourselves Uh, in great way. That's how our body is also made. We have adapted ourselves. So, thirdly, specific to the question which Priya you have addressed is about the theatre going and the big six screen experience. I believe you have to look at it uh, with the social element of a human being, and then going out and moving out, and the big screen experience. i think till such time we have content which can drive people to go out and have the big screen experience the need of being wanting to go out and socializing is going to create opportunities for businesses to prosper and that's the reason why i feel that sooner than later that the theater businesses will be opening up will come up and will adapt themselves to the new need which has arisen and we have seen this in the past if you if you if you don't have to go back to many years uh 911 and we thought that the aviation industry would crash nobody would want to fly but what happened after that six months and everybody was flying yes we adapted ourselves there were 
such as security at the airport. Airports created infrastructures to be able to get people in with better security. And we must have this safest travel. We had the Bombay bl uh, blast. And the experience of going to a five-star hotel changed. Earlier, we could just walk into a five-star hotel. Now we have a security check. There's a car check. We have adapted. Businesses have tweaked their business models, adapted themselves, and catered to the needs of the customers because it's very important and that social need of a person to go out. Businesses in the theaters will also adapt. We're already seeing a lot of experiments being done at, in the domestic scene as well as the overseas scene. China opened some 500 theaters. I'm sure Denmark and Sweden are opening theaters. There was a survey in the U.S., uh, which I read uh, a couple of days back, where uh, in about months' time, a month back when they surveyed people, they said about 30% of people wanted to go back to theaters. A couple of weeks back, they said 54% of people want to go back to theaters. So, yes. There will be a, yes, there will be a change in how the experience is, 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 uh, is consumed. Probably there will be social distancing inside the thing. There will be cleanliness. There will be changes in the tweaking in the business model. But yes, I am a firm believer that this Diwali will again have people sitting in theaters, having the popcorn and enjoying it. <laughs> Uh, can the speakers Hello. mute themselves who are not speaking, please? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Vikash ji, please. So I'm done, and thank you so much. I said I'm finished. Okay, okay. thank you. So, uh, before moving from uh, the brick mortar and theaters to the digital world, I would just like to invite, and it's a great, great honor to have with us, is Dr. Christoph Nabsdick who is on the front line of this pandemic. So let us all just take a moment to give a big round of applause to all the frontliners worldwide. So uh, Dr. Nabstick, thank you so much for your time. You are an you. ICU doctor treating, uh, you know, uh, the you're, you're seeing the worst basically. So what is your insight that you can share in comparing your new normal duties to what you have to deal in the last two months? Well, first of all, thank you, Priya, for having me. It's very kind, and uh, thank you for the kind, um, you know, applause and everything, appreciation. I would say that, uh, you know, I have to say that I'm very fortunate to be where I am at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. It's uh, Our situation is uh, probably very different from many other academic or other uh, um, hospitals in the United States, especially the epicenters of the uh, COVID pandemic, um, and particularly the East Coast uh, with New York City being the worst affected. Um, so while our daily life has changed quite a bit because I usually work in the heart and uh, um, thoracic um, cardiac surgery uh, field and so I see a lot of the patients with failing hearts and lungs. Um, we have shut down a lot of the uh, what we call elective surgery so our volume in that sense has uh, run down in anticipation of, uh, of the big wave that is now starting to come to us. Um, it, so because of our regional differences we haven't seen as many patients yet uh, as we've seen, as my colleagues are be seeing in New York. And maybe I should, rather than my experience, uh, reflect a little bit upon what they are experiencing, which is really a, a very, very um, overwhelming uh, uh, flood of very sick patients. And uh, it's it's very important to stress that these patients are not always the, the elderly and the people with comorbidities, which of course there are, many of them, but they are also very, very young patients with absolutely no health issues whatsoever up to that point. And these patients, uh, while many of them will survive, uh, unfortunately, a significant number of them will have complications and might, in fact, pass away. And I think that's uh, one of the major, um, major problems that uh, I think uh, people like us who are uh, used to a very um, high fidelity medical system are struggling with is that the system at times, especially in these places, gets overwhelmed. And the complex care that these patients deserve can sometimes not be provided. And because they are so frail and so fragile, um, maybe uh, at times we feel that we cannot give them what the patients need and we have outcomes that are undesirable. 
And I think, and again, any of my colleagues who's worked in medical field and especially in the ICU, we all have memories of patients that, uh, that passed away um, and some hurt more than others. And of course, it's always the young, it's the mothers, it's the, it's the innocent that haven't had the chance to life. Um, and so, and I think my colleagues are seeing more of these in a short period of time uh, now during COVID than they have seen maybe over their entire lifespan. And again, I think a lot of that comes to what Frank has pointed out earlier. You know, there's some areas where, uh, you know, you have these concentration of patients and where uh, ventilators might be uh, short and therefore care cannot be provided in a way that is um, would be appropriate otherwise. And then you have areas where, um, where things are uh, a little bit less um, uh, difficult, <coughs> as in, for example, the Mayo Clinic here, where we have so far uh, an abundance of resources because we are very blessed that the institution here in general, and we are in an area where overall less people live. Um, so, so in my case, uh, you know, I'm I'm planning to, I, I, you know, I, things are still very organized. So we are not uh, overwhelmed yet. Um, we are seeing a surge now. And which is just again geographically uh, delayed. Um, I would say, and not to paint too dark of a picture, I think these uh, months have also, and I will echo what uh, Frank has said, that also uh, brought up a lot of opportunity for people and brought people together to to uh, um, be um, inventive, innovative, uh, find new ways around things. Uh, and in a very short period of time, uh, thousands and thousands of research articles and approaches to the care of these patients have been uh, have been brought forth. Um, we are getting smarter in terms of how to treat these patients. And while we are still away from uh, having a vaccine, we are having a lot of success in uh, both with medications as well as with uh, ad uh, adjustment to um, the general uh, medical management. So I think you know there is there is a lot of hope um, and there's a lot of. Uh, um, ingenuity and I, I think if we um, keep in mind that this is something that we will for the most part get through um, and we use it as an opportunity to actually work collaboratively rather than pointing fingers, I think this could be uh, um, in the long run um, a, a, a success for the majority of us and in the meantime we have to be very patient and very disciplined to not prematurely um, uh, uh, take off the the guard and uh, allow um, you know the usual life to continue because I think that's where it as um, you know a lot of people um, you know feel like they they can do because of you know their personal health being go good and being young and everything but I think uh, the data shows that um, it's not that simple unfortunately so I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much, doctor, for joining. Uh, this is really helpful. Um, so. Doctor is on call, so you know if you have to log off, that's completely fine uh, because you know he's on call today. Thank you so much. Thank you. So um, my next question was for uh, one of the very well-known celebrities, uh, influencers uh, in the digital age, but I think I don't see her. So I am going to move to the next speaker. Uh, I think she might have some technical uh, issues because she was online before. Um, is to uh, Mr. Mahmoud Ali. As expected, the streaming or the over-the-top platforms, as we call in India, Netflix, Prime, Hotstar, have all experienced a huge surge in subscriptions since the lockdown. As the founder of Made in India OTT uh, platform Don Cinema, what trend have you seen in the entertainment consumption of the Indian audience? And more importantly, what do you anticipate the trend to be after the crisis is over? Uh, good morning, US, and good evening, India. Hope you are listening to me. Voice is there? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> very important uh, because, uh, as uh, Madhurji said, uh, industry is uh, locked down. Uh, entertainment industry is completely, uh, we never seen this kind of situation in our entire life. So, nowadays, very, uh, this digital pl platform comes as uh, 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 they can entertain people because uh, shooting is uh, cinema hall is uh, completely sh shut down 
tv serial shooting is not uh, showing uh, shooting and not showing uh, uh, next uh, serials in this uh, drama so now people are coming on digital platform and digital platform given uh, like netflix got uh, 15 million new subscribers uh, my platform got uh, more than 500000 new subscriber in this one month so we are showing uh, 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 people content uh, uh, what uh, make them happy uh, uh, we are trying to make uh, uh, comedy content we are trying to show comedy content to uh, informative content and nowadays uh, everyone is looking uh, for uh, indian uh, uh, people who is in the entertainment industry they will make uh, such kind of uh, uh, content in next generation they, uh, they will like uh, now in ramayan is uh, very much in trend in india and people wants to see 30 years back uh, serial again why because uh, uh, they want to know about okay, what exactly happening in this world and how our uh, religious uh, god came out of it hello we listening yeah we listening yes yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so uh, uh, we are trying uh, entertainment people are trying uh, when uh, this matter is finished uh, covid 19 is finished doctor work uh, doctor will be on uh, uh, rest so our uh, directors our producer our writer will uh, start to give uh, uh, maximum entertainment as the uh, people are uh, going in uh, lots of uh, tensions lots of uh, matters so i think my side uh, i'll just say okay this is the time to make uh, audience laugh uh, as much as we can so just to let all of you know uh, right now in india uh, two of the mythological series which were super hit in the 80s and the early 90s ramayana and mahabharata are played and mr mahmud ali was the assistant writer for mahabharata yeah wow. uh, i was uh, with uh, Dr. Ahim Asum Raja as an assistant, I start my career. Or Madhur Bhai ke saath mein bhi I uh, try to work in past as a writer yeah. uh, for Amir Khan uh, father. So now uh, I start. Yeah, years back. Years back, years back with Tahir Bhai. Yeah, with Tahir Bhai. Yeah. So, yeah, love to see you here. And uh, I started my own platform. Yeah. I started US. my own. Yeah, US. Okay. Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations. Great thank to you, see thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So this is the time to fight with uh, COVID-19 with positive attitude, with hope. Because uh, if uh, anyone can help in this uh, tough times, filmmaker can come out with good content and the uh, hope uh, uh, people is watching from uh, our industrious people that they will make such kind of uh, content they will make uh, come out of it from uh, covid 19. so my next question is to aju as a founder of technology startup with offices in us and india and serving customers globally with product and services solutions what has Chandra. been the biggest challenge and the biggest opportunity brought on by uh, COVID-19? And what has been your strategy to adapt to the change? Um, uh, first of all, thank you Priya, for inviting me to this wonderful panel. Um, so, you know, when you shared this topic, uh, conventional approach to unconventional, uh, so I, I was intrigued to look into the past week because what we say is conventional wisdom or conventional approach is something that we learned in the past. So, you know, I try to take a step back and see, you know, what we have learned in the past that we're trying to use uh, against the challenges we are facing today. Right? Um, so as a technology company, uh, we do things around artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, life sciences. And so everything we do around this with data. 
So we have been bracing for a downturn since 2019, just because if you look from the past since World War II, every decade we have been having some kind of uh, downturn, economic downturn. In the last one we had was in 2008. So it was about time. So we kind of were expecting an economic downturn, but not what we saw. But then I wanted to go back and see from a, a epidemic or a pandemic perspective, if there was anything that history could teach us. And you know, if you see every century since 1500s, 1500 had the topology epidemic, then we had different variants of plague um, in the 1600s and the 1700s. We had the flu in the 1800s, the Spanish flu in the 1900s. So, you know, we should have learned enough from the history. You know, conventional wisdom should have taught us that, you know, we had to be prepared for something like this. Like, as Gopalji said, we probably have to be prepared for more. Um, and, of course, this did throw up a lot of uh, challenges um, to all the businesses around the world, including in, um, in the interest of the time. And we're not going to talk about the operational challenges that we had, but more of challenges that, you know, kind of, we were, as I said, for the downturn, we were bracing for a downturn, but there were unexpected challenges that came out. You know, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit of that and say how we address that. Um, so first of all, I, I never expected the world to be shut down. Yeah. It's, it's like unbelievable that the world could get shut down. Uh, and for me, it was personally a challenge because uh, about 70% of the time I'm on road meeting our partners, and customers, investors. Um, so beginning of March, my whole calendar opened up. Like I, I, I had no travels. So I, I was starting to get worried there. And then India shut down. And uh, immediately in like two or three days, we started to see that you know, we were getting hit with something that we didn't plan. Um, you know, when we told our team to go ahead and work from home, we thought the team would be very happy because we, we are fortunate that the company, a lot of things can be done or almost everything can be done from home. Um, but suddenly we started seeing the emotional breakdown in our team, our team motivation going down. And that's because, you know, uh, th there's a fabric of going to work. You know, uh, people work, they collaborate, there are a lot of ideas exchanged. There's a lot of positivism that happens. And when people were, had, were although it's the same team and they had to start working from home, they were missing it. And so, uh, so, so they were actually, the morale was really going down. I had to regroup the whole team. And, you know, started to tell them with this quote, you know, that uh, if you want to see the rainbow, you have to put up with the rain. So I said, you know, we've been through so many, this is like the rain that we are waiting to see the rainbow. Um, and then we looked at it and said, you know, what can we do to make them feel better? So we didn't do anything great. We just looked and used some comments and common, common approaches. What we started doing is we started having all calls that we were having on the camp so people could see. Um, we started doing something called the social hangouts, which basically every alternate day uh, people come in for 13 to 45 minutes on, on a Zoom or some some conferencing tool, and then we play who wants to be a millionaire, family feud, you know, all simple games. Uh, no work discussed, it's so, so that we can replicate some of the things that was there at work. Like we said, birthday parties. Um, the, the, the beauty is people started coming together. They started liking this. They started, their morale started going up. Um, we also ensured that, you know, one, one of the biggest worries at this time is people in the finance, you know, can do their wages. So we ensured that, you know, we started paying them early so that, you know, they don't have to worry on that. So, so this in all actually helped us overcome uh, some of the uh, um, psychological issues the team was having. And once we had the team back, you know, this is a golden opportunity for anybody who's trying to build a product. Uh, because there's nobody out selling anything, you know, uh, everybody is, so, you know, uh, you can catch up on so many things that are there in your back burner. You don't have to worry about uh, what a new customer is asking. So I told the team that, you know, it's, it's, it's the best opportunity we have to take up the projects that we were not able to complete, you know, to, to build in the features that our competitors, to build in the capabilities and skills that our competitors had. 
because at this point there's no sales happening and when the world opens up uh, you know we are we are going to be at par with the rest. so we started working on the, the things that could help us uh, also you know bring up ideas and concepts that will help world fight uh, covid-19 as we go along uh, using some of the technologies that we had um in in a, as far as i was personally concerned you know one one of the beautiful things that i actually noticed is yes i was very worried whether i can be able to uh, meet up with all the investors the partners the customers because i used to meet them very often um and now since i could not travel uh, i i did not know what to do but the beauty of this is it opened up so much time for me that i'm actually being connected with my customers and partners twice as often as otherwise i would have because now i can call them more frequently i can get on phone calls and camps more frequently because they also have more time so uh, it's just beautiful and, uh, you know if you actually look at the way if you can look at the um, there's a lot of bad things that is happening but if you are one of the fortunate ones who are not affected then look at the positive side and try to come up with the with the spin this time so uh priya i have i just want to say some to dr christopher since he is there and then uh, he'll be moving out anytime he can move sure can sir. i can i uh dr christopher can you hear me sir dr christopher Christoph, can you hear? Uh... Sorry, sorry for that. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. sir. I just want to share some information with you. Our uh, our health ministry, that is now being called uh, being called uh, Ayush Ministry, they have issued advisories for the traditional Indian, Yunani, and uh, other traditional medicines like Ayurveda. And uh, the government of Gujarat, they have uh, tested those uh, things uh, with the people who uh, who came into contact of those. Uh, positive people so the results are amazing the ayurveda medicines the immunity boosters are working very well and uh, over 7000 patient those have been so those has been uh, tried uh, have shown in, uh, immense results so if you want because you are uh, uh, in charge of the covid uh, things from mayo clinic i would request you to try it on your patients also because the ayurveda the the, the medicines uh, of ayurveda are working well on the covids please look into it thank you yeah, we, we definitely know that um a big part of uh, why patients are failing um in covid is a uh, um excessive uh, inflammation so the body just uh, you know is is very inflamed and uh, and instead of just affecting the lung it affects other organs as well so so it, you know it it clearly is a big uh, target to um, to address the immune system and we know that for example turmeric has anti-inflammatory yes. properties so so i'm not saying that uh, well i'm not have any data that this particularly would necessarily work but uh, definitely the uh, uh, the modulation of the immune system is is one of the most um uh, hotly debated and you know addressed issues right now that um pertaining to the covid-19 therapy especially in the sickest patients thank you so we can share if you wish we can share the things with you thank you very much sure thank you so um uh, i was harsh mr harshal pradhan was on the line but um i don't see him anywhere uh, mr pradhan are you on the line i think we have lost him because he was uh, online so my next question is um to lena so we have seen numerous videos photos posts on social media by the doctors worldwide one such post that i saw which caught my attention was you stay home for us and we will fight for you as doctors have families too So, Dr. Lena Lena Pradhan Nabsdick is the assistant professor of surgery at Harvard Medical School and is also wife of Dr. Christoph Nabsdick. So, Lena, balancing a role of a wife and a mother on one hand, and a dedicated healthcare professional on the other, can you please share how life has been for you since this has all started personally and professionally? 
Sure. Um, I just want to say thank you, Priya, for inviting me, inviting Christoph to this panel. And it was um, really nice uh, hearing everybody's perspective. Thank you for sharing your perspective. Um, yes, so um, as, you, as you mentioned, um, you know, I'm a scientist myself and, a, um, and somebody who's working in, in a healthcare system and who has a spouse in the healthcare system. So it has been um, quite challenging uh, for us in the sense that uh, I'm dealing with uh, challenges at my work uh, and um, the people I work with, um, you know, what they have to go through, but also um, looking at our home front. And I think I'll speak more from the perspective of, um, you know, from uh, being a spouse of a healthcare worker. Um, so when this started coming up, um, the, the stories about um, SARS-CoV-2 and um, and COVID, and uh, when um, you know, we started looking in the media, and this was probably in January or February. Uh, Christopher and I, we were like, uh, you know, starting to look uh, more into it because we had actually planned a trip to India to visit my elderly parents uh, towards the end of March. And in fact, Christopher was in India um, uh, for a conference end of February, and uh, you know, we were already thinking maybe should he cancel the trip? What should you know? What should we do? We have a six-year-old. I also have an older child. Um, she's independent. Um, she's working in Boston. And so as a family, we had to, you know, as, a, as healthcare workers, we really had to um, get on the, uh, on planning our lives. And so the first thing we had to do was make sure that, um, you know, my parents who are in India, uh, they're elderly. And if they were okay, my brother lives in Bangalore. My, my parents live in Niathani uh, in Maharashtra state. So that was the first thing, but then, you know, we had to talk about our own lives with Christoph being an ICU doctor. And as the, as more and more news started coming out about, you know, what is happening and how much care these patients need and almost a lot of them end up in the ICU and the, the transmission uh, of, the, of the virus and how it is affecting the frontline workers, we really had to sit down and make a plan for our family as to, you know, how do we protect our unit? So we are two of us living in the house with our six-year-old. Um, and um, and this is, the, this is a um, story for pretty much every healthcare family as to how do you deal with somebody who is going out in the field, is treating some of the sickest patients or dealing with some of the sickest patients. And then, you know, how do you protect the family when you come home? So our, our plan was to, if this gets really bad, um, Christoph was just going to move out. And in fact, I do have friends uh, who have moved out um, or the, the healthcare provider has moved out of the family and they have to, you know, think about taking care of, you know, how do you, if you have a six year old in the house and if you have a parent who can't see them, I mean, uh, even littlest things, you know, you, you have to plan about those things and, and with schools out, um, how do you manage that? And then on top of it, I have two jobs. I, as I mentioned, I'm a scientist and I'm also um, uh, an entrepreneur myself. I have a life sciences company. So it has been very challenging um, for us to take care of the, our son, my husband being at work most of the time. I'm working from home. And But one of the things uh, what Aju was talking about is to how do you keep the morale up, right? Not only for your co-workers, but also for your uh, for your family. So one of the things that uh, started uh, uh, we started doing more often, especially at work, is um, getting together on um, remotely on any of these platforms, uh, video conferencing platforms, and you know, just sharing, talking about things, talking about families. Normally, when we are we work together in person, we're just always rushing, doing you know five million things. So that has definitely helped. Also, in you know, talking from a family perspective, now we have um, you know um, weekly Zoom meetings with our extended family, with everywhere uh, family of being you know in Europe, in 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 the U.S., in in India. So that has also helped. In fact, um, my son all of a sudden realizes that he has like fifteen cousins that you know he's never really met in person. So you know there are there are opportunities, um, and you know there's hope. Uh, one of the other things that I would like to stress on is to take care of not only your immediate family or you know people in your immediate circle, but also, but also your neighbors. So early on, uh, we had some scare about some exposure, and so we were essentially quarantined. And a lot of our neighbors, you know, helped us. Um, they were bringing us food. They were you know making sure that we are okay. 
And so I think one thing that we absolutely have to um, keep this in mind, and, and I think Frank stressed on it, we are all in it together. And you know, this is something that has affected everyone globally and pretty much in, um, you know, in a very stressful way. And as long as we look out for each other, I think we will be good and we will come out on the other end uh, as a, you know, as a better unit, a single unit that lives on this planet. So. So now we are at 9.43 a.m. and this is, um, we have time till 10 o'clock. So my next question uh, is going to be um, a question that is basically your personal reflection. And I just want about um, each speaker to just give a minute to it, uh, just because of the sensitivity of time. So I would like to start again with Frank. What was your most impactful personal learning during this pandemic? And what is your advice to the viewers? First of all, I very much um, uh, enjoyed this conversation, you know, getting the insight from uh, all of you, um, uh, from you, Christoph, as you to work with patients, uh, from you, Acho, as you're an entrepreneur, uh, the, the, the Bollywood stars and the Bollywood uh, producers. Um, I would like to give um, three, um, make three observations. First of all, we have to reconnect with Mother Earth. What Arushi said in the beginning is very important. We shouldn't um, go back to our um, um, uh, attitudes we had uh, pre-corona, but we should reflect what we can do better. And um, I think the connection with Mother Earth is so important. And personally, myself, I'm doing it, um, or try to do it. I spend a lot of time in my garden. Um, I do a bit of uh, yoga, and, and uh, it's a bit like Zen, you know, like connecting with uh, Mother Earth. And um, I wish it to everybody, you know, doing this and to you mankind that we can reconnect with Mother Earth. Um, secondly, um, I believe that we need um, a new uh, multi-stakeholder approach where um, uh, the politicians, um, the business people and civil society can work together. I believe we are all in our silos and there's no real connection from, from the politicians um, to the people. Um, maybe from the business people uh, to the politicians, uh, uh, neither. So we have to uh, reconnect all these different groups in these times of crisis and um, try really to engage in dialogue. And lastly, as uh, we had uh, all the Bollywood uh, stars here at this call, I think storytelling is very important. Uh, storytelling in uh, these times of challenges and crisis and uh, to see that really there's hope at the horizon, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And that's also, and you asked me, Priya, about my own personal takeaway and observation. That's what I also try to do myself, you know, like uh, engage with people, talk about best practices, um, storytelling. And uh, yeah, Bollywood has a very important uh, role to play. Thank you. So, uh, yes, uh, Gopalji, in, uh, in one minute or so. Thank you, Priya. Uh, my take is uh, this is a time when, uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Chris has told that uh, told that uh, connect with the Mother Earth. So we are trying to do, uh, do this uh, right now. We are go getting back to our roots. This is a time when we can uh, re <laughs> our uh, uh, village rural economy. We can really emphasis uh, put emphasis upon the traditional way of uh, business, uh, which uh, eventually is uh, eco-friendly, environment-friendly in nature. We can revive our rural economy. We can empower our rural peoples. The distance between the urban rich and the rural poor, it was uh, too wide. Now uh, we hope that we will be able to bridge it. Uh, we are working upon those models uh, to uh, support them, techni technical, uh, it means technical things, and the business models of supply chain management, we are working on those uh, models. And I, we hope that uh, these things will work in future and our rural economy uh, will be able to uh, revive and uh, re-establish uh, our GDP, the numbers which are going down. The rural uh, portion of India will be able to take care of the cities now. This is a uh, flip side of uh, the economy now. and. Uh, for most thing, what I have experienced personally is 
the half of india is in uh, need of help and the other half of india is helping india that is a very beautiful thing about uh, india we are one at this time and helping each other without expecting anything from each other thank you very much so yes um, can madhur uh, you give your uh, personal learnings well i think uh, this was a great introspection for mankind and uh, i think uh, we learned a lot from this and uh, globally i mean to say how we how we have got a like you know this whole thing really got us connected with mankind people relationship friends like we didn't have time earlier to connect with friends and all so now we do video calling we talk to them everywhere you know because in day to day life we are all busy in our own world so we always see we we'll call you later and all so there's a lot of time ki today we have the introspection of thing of meeting people interacting with people how uh, the global world is one big family where we are all fighting together that that thing really have come to us and how uh, we survive in this lockdown that is the main purpose we we think we everybody has got this thing and i think like doctor said it is very necessary to do good exercise yoga uh, it is very because it get fatigue when you're sitting at home all the time watch movies read books gardening and best thing to is connecting with your friends family and people and watch some good movies that is the only thing i would say <coughs> uh, just keep it to a minute yes i think on um, yes on a on a larger scale on 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 an earth day i think that it uh, i think we we all were running too fast you know and we were running so fast that everything was going berserk so this is a, a wonderful way it's, it was almost like in a hindi film you know the villain goes uh, absolutely out of hand and is creating chaos all over till his younger brother is killed <laughs> and then he sits down and takes stock of things so i think this as a pause button has been a remarkable one and i think it was a very very needed one uh on a personal level i think that uh, there is a lot of hope there is a lot of promise um, these these moments give you a lot of opportunities to realize where in lies the opportunity and how the world changes you had uh, germany which was almost finished in one world war you had japan which was almost finished in another world war but look at the way they all came and uh, nearer home we have gujarat we have kutch we have well they were minor uh, calamities but any calamity people do regain its human the resilience is very high in human um, kind you know mankind and i think we will all get back and we need to look for those human elements and opportunities human elements without uh, opportunities without human elements is not going to work in the post corona time i think i think that's our greatest learning and victory probably so memo ji can you just in less than a minute share uh, what was your learning uh, during this uh, whole lockdown that we are in right now just in less than Hello. a minute because you know we have to go to other speakers as well we are less on yeah. time actually my fasting time was there so i left for um, no problem no problem so, uh, this is the time we understand the, who is the ravana and how to kill him and uh, we will uh, uh, play the part of the ram okay, we will uh, finish this uh, covid 19 as ravan and we will uh, happily uh, make uh, in future dasera kind of festival okay, yes we did it yeah nice aju aju what was your learning oh, in less than a minute I um well actually um uh i i try to there's nothing we can do so like as mother ji and ramanan ji said you know uh it, i've been able to connect with a lot of my friends which otherwise we would not do and uh, personally what i did is i picked up a project, new project every week that i have never done in my life i don't know to dance so i told my daughter to teach me ballroom dance so i performed to the family one week uh i I wrote up a stand-up comedy routine and performed uh, and webcam to some of my friends. So every week I tried something new, so that uh, it's, this is my sixth week in lockdown. 
So, uh, and, and, and you know, there's nothing you can worry. You know, just uh, you can do. You know, if you can. Uh, and the, my advice to about this thing is make the lockdown miserable. Make it memorable. You know, just if you can put food on table and you can take care of a loved one, don't make it miserable, just make it memorable. It's once in a lifetime opportunity for you to do things that you would have otherwise never done. Dr. Christoph, what was, what is, what is, what's one thing you can share with us, the learning and the advice? Yeah, so I mean, this was the first time in probably 20 years that I spent as much time with my family and, and well, back then I didn't have a wife and a child, so, so the first time ever pretty much. And uh, I would say that this, uh, since all of us experiencing something like this, this across the globe, I think it really can unite people. And it, I hope that it will. And as Frank said, we should not point fingers. Instead, we should eventually reflect upon this as an opportunity to, to grow together as a community and use this time to be innovative, to be thankful, to be more attentive to our neighbors, to our uh, more vulnerable um, parts of the population, and just... Uh, use it as an opportunity really and to to um, reflect upon your own uh, life and what you want to do in life and and use it as a true uh, chance to to uh, start something new maybe and I think that's uh, what we have been talking about the the opportunity that is um, within this temporary crisis Lena sure so one thing I can definitely say from the scientific community we are working very hard come up with new therapies, new treatments, so there is a lot of hope. In fact, my lab itself is also working on a lot of COVID-related um, research. But um, so there is a lot of hope. I know there are scientists all around the world working very hard. Uh, there will be um, breakthroughs coming through very soon. There will be treatments, there will be vaccines. So that is on the, the healthcare um, science side. But from a personal side, um, just like everybody said before, um, you know, um, forming relationships, um, uh, renewing your relationships, uh, not just with uh, with people, but also with Mother Nature. So I'm getting my son into gardening and getting our son into bird watching and just connecting with Mother Nature, connecting with family. And as Christoph said, this was the first time in our um, us being together that we could spend some quality time, you know, reflection and quality time together as a unit. Vikas ji, do you want to share uh, <clears throat> your learning? Because we are really uh, low on time. So in 30 seconds, from one minute. Yeah. So quickly, at a personal level, I think uh, everybody has said that we suddenly realized that we haven't been spending too much time with the family. So we are now spending time and realizing what all we were missing. So that, that's a good, good thing. At the social level, I think we have also realized that a lot of work and a lot of things which we thought we needed, physical presence was needed are not needed. So new work style will, will evolve with this kind of uh, uh, experience. And that's the bright thing. And I think these are a couple of things which, which come up to my mind. Uh, Thank you. So um, we are almost towards the end now, and I want to give a concluding remark. But before that, I want to thank uh, Mr. Gio Morikan and Mr. Virinder Rawat, who are also with us here without whose support this would not have been possible so in 30 seconds if uh, mr geo uh, and mr rawat if you want to share some words uh, please uh, take the mic because i need to give the concluding remarks before we close i'd like to thank all of the speakers and their great insights um for so efficiently and eloquently moderating this and sequoia for making this possible um life goes by so quickly um, COVID-19 has slowed down life and made us realize how truly valuable life is, each and every life, and that life is a gift made possible mostly because of Mother Earth. The true center of innovation are humans, but going forward, we should deeply consider how we innovate and most importantly, how we incorporate the well-being of all humans and the earth while doing it. Uh, stay healthy and be safe. Thank you and namaste. So now, thank you first of all to all of you uh, for your time. I know because of the technical difficulties, some of them have dropped because they are messaging me, but I would just give concluding remarks now.
We have heard about the dire economic consequences in the short to midterm about the acceleration of digitization and the hope of more balanced economic future. We have considered how human survival should be our sole focus and learn from the lessons of Indian Ayurvedic based practices for the future. How this pause of human overactivity has reminded us that Mother Earth can revive and remind us what is important for human survival and how we need to focus back again on the environment. The Bollywood impact and for the entertainment industries around the world is huge. But the cinema world will reemerge in a different and more creative way. All of the challenges that lie ahead, but the appetite and the cons consumption is rising. So there will be creative digital solutions to the entertainment experience. From a medical perspective, it has been taxing and shortfalls exposed on how we care for the most critical. But there is hope from how we have battled the challenges. We can adapt to the better face the challenge uh, to, to better face the challenges of the future. From a technology and startup perspective, we learned that normal workflow was completely interrupted initially. But how you can pivot as a company? and help the workforce adapt to the new normal, focus on the new innovation even during these challenges, challenging times. And since we have been discussing conventional approaches to unconventional challenges, I would be I terribly remiss if I would not say this on behalf of all our panelists and the viewers. To those frontline workers, countless medical staff and all the essential workers from government to the civil service, to supermarkets, to restaurants, to deliveries and services companies, to all types of cleaning crews that have kept us safe, your service has been the biggest sacrifice. And you have our deepest gratitude and may we never forget what you do for us each and every day. As the world has come to a grinding halt due to COVID-19, there is a lot of fear and challenges. But where there is fear, there is also hope and opportunities. And where there are challenges, there is room to innovate. innovate. This too shall pass. Thank you very much for joining.